Uh, look, very briefly, because my time is short, I want, can I thank or wish everybody in the House uh, a, a good Christmas, and particularly to the service officers, uh, to the ushers, uh, to all of the staff in the Oireachtas, the Bills office, uh, the people who work in the canteens and the restaurants, and everybody else, the cleaners, uh, who help us uh, make this place uh, operate. Um, thanks very much, and I hope you have a good Christmas. Uh, there's a young mother with a teenage son who's watching this debate now, who is four years in emergency accommodation. She uh, works as an agency worker for a state agency uh, looking after, ironically enough, vulnerable children. Uh, although her own son's, teenage son's, mental health is absolutely on the floor because they've been four years in emergency accommodation. She was three years on the housing list uh, at November last year when she was told uh, that she was just about to be housed and then her income was reviewed and she was told she was off the list. Not only was she not getting a council house, but she now was not entitled to HAP either, to go and look for a new place, and we had to fight to prevent her being evicted from the emergency accommodation. Uh, so there's a lot at stake in this debate. Now, I've been asking for this debate for months and months and months. Uh, we've been asking for the review uh, of the income thresholds for years and years and years, uh, for a decade. In, in that time, literally tens of thousands of people have been removed from the list. Uh, in um, uh, Up to 2019, in the previous five years, the number of people entitled to social housing had dropped from 46% to 33%. Uh, now it's down probably below 30% before this rise in the income the threshold. So t literally tens of thousands of people have been uh, taken off the housing list and left in absolute li limbo. In my area, if you were to pay one third of your income on the average rent, you would need to be earning €84,000 to pay the average uh, rent. You'd need to be earning about 150000 to pay the average uh, house price. So although this is welcome, even that person I mentioned there, who's just over the threshold, is not guaranteed they will get their time back. Uh, she has just messaged me to say about her work, thanks again, we have critical low levels of staff again, and I can't do overtime, I can't go for a promotion either, even though I have been encouraged. Because if she did, she might go over the new thro thresholds, and there are major staffing shortages where she works, okay? That's the position people are in. It's absolutely outrageous. And this has gone on and on and on for years. Um, let me read a letter that was sent to the Minister on the 23rd of November. Uh, Dear Minister, I'm writing you today to, for you to listen to my story. I'm a mum of two teenage girls, 13 years of age and 16 years of age, and a wife to a hard-working, honest man who has paid his taxes all his life. We unfortunately cannot fix our situation by ourselves. Uh, our home is being sold. We are being evicted. I'm 55 years living in my home. My parents are living in it since 1958. They are since deceased. I was led to believe all my life we were safe as we were lifelong tenants. When we were in a position a few years to, ago to get a mortgage, we were told our home was not for sale. Now it's for sale. The bank will not give us a mortgage anymore because of our age and income. The woman that is selling the house doesn't even know me or my family. She is the sister of our landlord who died two years ago. I need you to help us because we cannot fix this situation. We are running out of time. So when you're at home at Christmas, uh, sitting, having your Christmas dinner and sitting back enjoying your family, please have a picture of my family sitting in our car at the side of the road, having no Christmas because we do not have a home. My darling beloved husband will be put into an early grave as he is a broken man, as the dad of the house, as a husband, he cannot fix this. Uh, I, won't, I haven't got time to complete uh, the letter. That family, family who just got a notice from the court that they are going to be evicted with an enforcement order from their home, where they've always paid the rent, where they've done absolutely nothing wrong, will not benefit uh, almost certainly from the new thresholds because they will still be above the new thresholds. Uh, there's a one income family on an average industrial income. So they have no HAP support, nowhere to go, and they are pleading for help. Okay? What is going to happen for them? So one question is, are, this, are the government going to purchase houses in that situation where the people aren't on HAPs and RAS 
but where they clearly do not have the income to be able to afford the rents and house prices that I've just described. Right? We need to know the answer to that question. They need to know the answer to that question. Uh, but they cannot be left to, to be in a car on the side of the road. If that happens, this state is a disgrace. So something has to be done about that. Another question. Lots of people at the moment, I have two cases, I won't go through the details because I don't have time, because they were homeless or because their family came and joined them in one family reunification case, uh, had to get properties where they are overcrowded. But they couldn't find anything else. They're not being given HAP because it's overcrowded. Now that's bureaucratic madness. They don't have anywhere else to go, but they're not being given HAP. So that has to happen. And the government need to recognise the nurses, the teachers, all of these huge number of these people cannot afford the rents and the house prices. They're not entitled to any support at all if they are over the threshold. Now the ultimate answer is obviously to deliver the public and affordable housing on public land that we're not delivering. The real figures for this year are an additional 1,600 AHB and local authority houses as of the first six months of the, this year. That's pathetic. Right? So we need to do something about that. That means, to my mind, use the 700 million that was not spent on buying properties where people have been evicted and getting a higher proportion than the 20% or the 10% of social housing immediately, urgently, so we have houses uh, for those people. But it also means having thresholds that actually reckon on uh, the incomes that people have as against the rents and the house prices that are in their area. Otherwise, thousands of working people are going to be left in a very serious position. So I hope the minister is listening.